Hello and welcome to Movies Games Beyond, where we're looking at the top 10 interracial fur movies. Now, if we miss any of this list, please let us know in the comments below. But let's get into today's video. Number 10, guess who? Teresa, played by Zoe Saldana, is a young woman who is about to introduce her fiancé to her father, Percy Jones, played by Bernie Mac. Percy is eager to meet his African-American daughter's businessman, Bew, but he's shocked to learn that she is engaged to Simon Green, played by Ashton Kutcher, a white man. Staying with the Joneses to celebrate Percy and his wife's 25th wedding anniversary, the accident-prone Simon makes a terrible first impression and faces an uphill battle to win over his future father-in-law. I actually enjoyed this. I thought it funny. I like Ashton Kutcher, Bernie Mac's funny, and Zoe Saldana from Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep. Bit of trivia for the, for you guys, yeah? The director's reason for making this film is I have a 12 and a half year old daughter who's beautiful and I'm sure she's going to come home one day with some Lithuanian, Samoan, punk rock drummer dude and I thought if I did this movie I'd be able to work out my issues before that day comes. Bit of goof for you guys. They spent over... Um, one hundred thousand dollars, yeah, on digital effects, trying to remove Ashton Kutcher's red Kabbalah bracelet in every scene. But when he's drinking the coffee, you can start, you can still see it. Did you know that, guys? Nope. Coming in at number nine is something new. Career-minded Kenyon McQueen is set up on a blind date with architect Brian Kelly, but backs out when she realizes that he is white. Impressed with his work on a friend's mansion, McQueen hires Kelly to design her new garden and he sweeps her off her feet. But after her friends introduce her to executive Mark Harper, McQueen must choose between the type of man she always dreamed she wanted and giving in to life's little surprises. A bit of trivia for you guys. Sana Lathan's character, Kenya, is the daughter of Alfred Woodward's character. They share the same relationship in Love and Basketball, which came in 2000, 2000, and also in The Family That Praise, 2008. Bit of goofs for you guys. When Kenya and Mark are at the driving range, she knocks the ball off the tee by accident, but the next shot shows the ball still on the tee. Did you notice that, guys? I certainly didn't. Next up, at number 8, we have The Bodyguard. Best-selling pop diva Rachel Maron, Whitney Houston, has a stalker whose obsession has risen to the level of disturbing threats. At the urging of her manager, played by Gary Kemp, Rachel hires former Secret Service agent Frank Farmer, played by Kevin Costner, as her bodyguard. Initially resented and treated with disdain for his hard-nosed security procedures, Farmer soon becomes an integral part of Rachel's inner circle. As they spend more time together, client and protector become closer still. I love this movie, guys. Seen it. Yes, yeah, great movie, that guys. But a bit of trivia for you is it was Kevin Costner's idea for Whitney Houston to start "I Will Always Love You" a cappella. Bit of goose for you as well. For a supposedly trained professional, Frank Farmer commits at least two violations of basic weapon safety rules by pointing a loaded weapon at people he doesn't intend to shoot. First. When he is dis discussing security with Henry, Frank points his 45 directly at Henry. Then during the incident at the cabin, as soon as he, ch as soon as he chambers around in his um, 45, he points it directly at Nikki's face as he tells her to stay still. Oh, interesting guys. I'm trained in the firearms, but um, I didn't pick up on that. Maybe I need to go and do my training again. Next up, we have number, at number 7, Save the Last Dance. Sarah, played by Julia Stiles, is moved from a small midwestern town to the south side of Chicago when her mother dies in a car accident and must live with her father. She soon falls for an African-American teenager played by Sean Patrick Thomas at her new high school and he has less than an idyllic past. They share a love for dance played by, by ballet and hip-hop respectively and together they tackle the problems that go with an interracial relationship. A bit of trivia and goose. Trivia. Director Thomas Carter cast Julia Stiles in the role of Sarah after seeing her table dance in 10 Things I Hear About You, which came out in 1999. 
Didn't know that, guys. A bit of goose for you. Juilliard is mis misspelled as Juilliard on the si sign announcing auditions. Um, yeah, not sure. Just missing an eye out of it, guys. Coming in at number six is the big stick. Kumail, 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 or Kumail, is a Pakistani comic who meets an American graduate student named Emily at one of his stand-up shows. As the relationship blossoms, he soon becomes worried about what his traditional Muslim parents will think of her. When Emily suddenly comes down with an illness that leaves her in a coma, Kumail finds himself developing a bond with her deeply concerned mother and father. Some trivia for you guys. The film was released in the United States on Kumail Nanjiani and Emily V. Gordon's 10th wedding anniversary. Didn't know that. A bit of goof. When Kumail is eating fast food and receives a text saying that he is supposed to be on stage in 20 minutes, the text is marked as being sent one day beforehand. <laughs> I didn't know that, guys. Did you? Did you pick up on that? Are you... Have you got hawk eyes and see that kind of stuff? Are you looking out for goose when you're watching movies? Anyway, coming in at number five, Were Hands Touch? It's a 2018 British, Belgian, Canadian, Irish romantic war drama film written and directed by Amar Azante and casting Amadala Stenberg for the role of Lena. George McKay as Lutz, Abby Cornish as Kirsten, Christopher Eccleston as Hines and Tom Sweet as Cohen. It was produced by Charlie Hansen and tells the story of Lena, a biracial girl under threat because of her race due to her living in Nazi Germany. The film began their shoot in November 2016 in Belgium and lasted for a month, packing up in December 2016. Bit of trivia for you guys. According to a Santa in November 2016 interview on Kim Komodo Mayo's film review, the movie was first intended to be shot in 2009 and had been launched at the, that year's Cannes. The project, however, collapsed. Moving on, no goose for that one, guys. Number four is Focus. Nicky, played by Will Smith, a veteran con artist, takes a novice named Jess, played by Margot Robbie, under his wing. While Nicky teaches Jess the tricks of the trade, the pair become romantically involved. But when Jess gets comfortable, Uncomfortably close, Nikki ends her relationship. Three years later, Nikki is in Buenos Aires working a very dangerous scheme when Jess, now an accomplished femme f fatal, uh, fatal, unexpectedly shows up. Her appearance throws Nikki for a loop at a time when he cannot afford to be off his game. Bit of trivia it was originally scheduled to star Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone. But both dropped out. And some goose for you guys. When the handbag is returned and they are speaking over glasses of wine, the levels in the glasses change, as does the size of one of the wine glasses. <laughs> Next we have at number three, Everything Everything. Maddie, played by Ahmad Stenberg, is a smart, curious and imaginative 18-year-old who is unable to leave the protection of her hermetically sealed environment within her house because of an illness. Ollie, played by Nick Robinson, is a boy next door who won't let that stop them from being together. Gazing through windows and talking only through texts, Maddie and Ollie form a deep bond that leads them to risk everything to be together, even if it means losing everything. Bit of trivia. Ollie's life at home was a bigger role in the move in the book than in the movie. The book goes more into depth on Ollie's life and the, and his person. Bit of goof. She would not have had identification and thus not been able to to board a plane to fly to Hawaii. Hmm. Never picked up on that, guys. Did you? Next up, we have at number two, a United Kingdom. Just before his return from his examinations in London to Buchanaland, where he is to become ruler, Prince Seretse Seret Kama falls in love and marries Ruth Williams, a white lady from South London. Bringing Ruth home causes a significant global outcry. 
I don't think I've seen this one, guys. But let's have a look for some trivia. Trivia, guys. The house used as Ruf and Seretse's home in the film was the home of the real Ruf and Seretse. And Goofs, at about 117, the civil servant ref refers to the new Prime Minister as Sir Winston Churchill. He was not knighted until 1953. Coming in at number one, guys, is the sun is also a star. Collie's destined heart felt in Daniel Bay and Jamaican-born pragmatist Natasha Kingsley meet and fall in love with each other. More than one magical day in the minds of the intensity and whirlwind of New York City. Stars promptly fly between these two outsiders, who may never have met, had fate not given them a little push. With only hours left on the clock in what appears to be her last day in the US, Natasha is battling against her family's de deportation similar as fiercely as she's battling her developing affections for Daniel. Some trivia for you. Yara Shahadi was the first choice for Natasha by director Rai Russo Young and the studio. There's no goose for that one, guys, and that is our top 10 interracial affair movies. Let us know in the comments if you like this video. Did we miss any off? Let us know if we did. Which is your favourite as well? Let us know that, guys, and thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you liked it. And until next time, guys, thanks very much. Goodbye.